Okay, I am testing out something new today. <clears throat> so we shall see how we go. I have a new program that I'm trialing and I'm very excited about it if it works because I think it will revolutionize our live videos together. Thank you all for being here. I'm going to try and jump in pretty much straight away today so that you can get the most out of the um, talk that I have for you, that what I've prepared. <clears throat> so I'm just having a look on here. I can't see any comments on my system. So I'll just make sure that I have it uploaded on my computer as you're all jumping in. Just make sure you put a comment once you're here, just so that I can check it all out. Hope you're all well today. Oh, hi, Lisa. Good, I can see a comment here. That's excellent news. <laughs> hi, Kayla. Good to see you. So, I think I've got it all here as well, just in case. It's always good to have, you know, a few things happening together. Hi, Tina. Very good. And I'll turn that on silent too. Okay. So most of you know that today I wanted to talk about the habits workshop that I attended with Kiki K. So this was the awesome planner that I got given. Ta -da! The beautiful habits uh, journal. And good morning, Nicole. Hello. Well, good afternoon, I should say. It's morning for me because I slept in. I'm still not feeling 100% naughty girl because I'm going to bed too late. <clears throat> so good time to put new habits into practice. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was a really, really good workshop. I was really happy that Jesse and I got to go. I took Jesse along with me because I thought that it would help both of us with different things that we're going through at the moment. Obviously every, every person's different what we're working on. For me, I wanted to apply it personally. Um, but also I knew that if I applied it personally, it would help my business as well. Um, and I did a little bit of research about habits and business and how it can affect your business uh, by applying good habits and what bad habits can do for your business as well. So there was a quote here that I really loved um, and it's in it's actually in the um, Kiki K journal. Let's see if I can get this right here. I'm trying new things. <laughs> So I think I do that. Oh, I know what I need to do. I'm like, why isn't it going on the same picture? <laughs> I'm, I'm learning new things here, so bear with me. <clears throat> okay, so this was the one that really stood out for me. Hopefully you can see this okay. But it says the difference between who you are and who you want to be is what you do. So that really resonated with me. I'll leave it up on there a little bit longer. <clears throat> but it really does, little things that you do every day can make such a huge impact on what is happening to your business, to your life. Like it's a series of little decisions um, that can really make a big difference. So even this one here hit home as well. <clears throat> Sorry, I'll just move my little watermark. You will never change your life until you change something you do daily. So we all want changes in our business, um, but that can be really challenging to do because uh, we sort of feel like we're doing something, but if we're not doing it often enough or we're not regular with that or we're not, I mean, we keep talking about it all the time, consistency, but in a way, consistency actually is a habit because if we're, if we're consistent, it means it's something that's in place that is going to keep happening um, that you're in a routine, you have a process in place. So really consistency is equal to a habit. <clears throat> and that was a big thing for me to realize going to this workshop. I'm like, I keep telling the girls that are in the Go For Grease training group, you know, we need to be consistent, we need to be consistent. But in actual fact, we need to form habits that are going to help us to be a better version of ourselves. And to see the results that we want to see in our business. Because it's nothing worse than feeling like you're working, um, feeling like you're doing all these hundred things. Because I think with Stampin' Up, that's probably 
a really challenging thing is we sort of need to know lots and lots of different skills. We need to know lots of different, um, you love the new system? Oh, good. It's working well. Excellent. I'm, I'm seeing comments come through. Um, yeah, it looks really good, doesn't it? Having the quotes and yeah, I'm very excited about the new system. In case you don't know what it is, check it out. It's called Switcher. I'm happy to share that. Um, I think it's Switcher, Switcher Studio or something like that. So yeah, definitely check it out. It's really good. So, um, yeah, it's, it's really vital for us to actually sit down. And that's what I love about this journal is that it helps me to sit down and actually analyze what my habits are. What have I formed that are bad habits and where do I want to change them and how do I change them? And by writing things down, it's sort of like an accountability process and trying to understand your own personality and what's going to help you to form habits. For me, I love accountability and I think that's why I do a lot of things that are based on um, not letting other people down. Um, so the blog hops, and but running the blog hop, I think really helps me because it's like, if I don't get up and I don't run this, then that's on me. And then I feel bad about it. So <clears throat> even my Go For Grease training program, it all started because I wanted to make sure that I trained my team well. And I know what I'm like. I'm like, I'm going to start this and then I'm just going to start peaking and then go, you know, and then it turns into nothing. Um, and some of you might be the same. You have heaps of motivation to begin with and then it just all turns to pot. So for me, I had to create something that enabled me to have like a lot of responsibility, accountability on me to make sure that I followed through. Hence why I did a paid training program because I'm like, there's nothing more, um, sort of that causes more accountability than someone paying you and expecting you to come to the party. So that was really good for me and for my team, of course, and it's a great benefit for them. But then also it's been able to benefit demonstrators around the world that are part of that training program. And that never would have happened had I not have identified what I needed to do to form a good habit. <clears throat> oh, is it dropping out? Oh, that's not good. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this program because I think, yeah, that's what I'm going to test today and see what it is like live. And it may end up becoming something that I have to record and then come back later because I'm not sure if the Australian internet can handle this program. But anyway, we will soon find out because I'm trying it today on both this business page and then my second one. So I'm sorry if it's jumping all over the place. So maybe go out and back in, try it out. Um, <clears throat> so the other thing that I wanted to show you to this quote here, sorry about my phlegmy th throat too, it's terrible. So the difference between who you are and who you want to be is what you do. And I think that that is so profound because it actually tells us that we are made up of the habits that we form. So if we have bad habits, that becomes who we are. And that's kind of a bit scary, actually. I'm like, oh my goodness, if my habits define me, I'm in a whole lot of trouble. <laughs> this could be really bad. <laughs> Hi, Kat. <laughs> Hi, Rosemary. So I'm gonna start with the bad habits that can prevent us from succeeding in business. And I found this on the entrepreneur.com website <clears throat> because it resonated with me. But yeah, basically there's a few different things that can um, really affect our businesses when we're starting out, particularly with stamping up. And I'll, I'll sort of turn these into a stamping up, um, like relate it back to stamping up. So the first thing is focusing on too much at once. Now, this one here really hit home with me because I think with Stampin' Up! we have so many different things that um, we need to learn about. And the more that we start digging, the more overwhelming it feels and the more we're like, oh my goodness, there's so much work to do. Oh, sorry. Sorry, everyone. It's good to know because I might have to get better internet for 
this program. I might try it on my other internet the next time. But anyway, come back and watch the recording. <clears throat> <clears throat> so yes, being very careful to really hone in your skills on, in one area and not do too many things at the same time because that can really um, shift our focus. It can really affect um, how we sort of... Actually, I might just turn these, these off and pretend you're not there. And that might help with the internet too. I'll do my bit on this side. Turn Wi-Fi off. Turn Wi-Fi off and we'll see if that helps a little bit. <clears throat> so Louise is last. So if it improves, just let me know. Then at least I'll, I'll know for next time. So yes, don't focus on too many things at once because it will definitely get overwhelming and I'm sure many of you get to a point where you're just like, oh my goodness, this is just way too much and I'm not getting paid, um, I'm spending a lot of money, I'm asking people for help and it's costing me more. Um, anyone commenting? No. Uh, so yeah, that can be really discouraging and I've seen a lot of demonstrators stop trying to learn because they're trying too much and it becomes too much all at one time. So one thing I let my team know is just work on one thing at a time. Um, but if you're starting to feel a bit more confident with that one thing, don't ever feel like you're getting into a comfort zone because comfort zones are pretty dangerous. So you want to make sure that you, you keep challenging yourself and keep trying new things and learning new things. And if you think that you're going to get to a point where you've learnt it all, and it's going to be easy and everything's just going to happen and you won't have to try new things. You won't have to learn anything. <laughs> I'm still learning. Like even this system today, you know, I'm still pushing myself to, to try new things. And, you know, at the moment it's dropping out and, you know, people are saying it's freezing every 10 seconds. But I've got to give it a go. Otherwise, how do I know how I can improve what I'm doing um, and it's a bad thing about the internet here in Australia is it's just so bad like even in the Philippines it was better internet than here so hopefully when the NBN comes we can do cool stuff like this and this is what I wanted to test it for so I'm very sorry you're on my guinea pigs today <clears throat> so the other thing is remaining too focused on one thing which sort of goes hand in hand with what I was saying um, so you could just be so honed in on your crafting ability and making cards. And I've seen it time and time again where people are like, um, you know, I've been making cards and I've been doing all of these things and I'm not getting anything in my business. And I said, how are you going with your newsletters? What? What's a newsletter? Okay. How are you going with your blogging? What? I'm creating. I'm sharing it. I'm sharing it. Where are you sharing it? Um, on some Stampin' Up! forums. <laughs> and you're like, no, it's all of those things tied in together that is actually going to help your business. And we could actually be focusing on the wrong area that is not necessarily going to actually get us new customers, help us find new customers, and help us get new team members. So you have to always analyze what exactly are you doing and how does it contribute to your business? So don't focus on one area. And I think that's the key with Stampin' Up! is you do gradually want to learn each area, but then that has to become a combination together. And making sure that you're not putting one one um, too much in one area. Because then, yeah, it's, it just has to be all together, which is tough. But, <clears throat> oh, don't refresh the page. I'm sorry, everyone. <clears throat> you can watch the video later. I'm very sorry. This is what this is what happens when you're testing new things. But the delaying of creation systems and processes, I know that sounds very overwhelming, but we really, really do need systems and processes in place if you want to grow a team. So if you don't know what you're doing for your team members, if you don't have like an award system or you don't have a group for them or you don't have a regular newsletter... Same with your customers. You're saying, yeah, I want customers. Okay, have you got your processes in place to be able to care for them? You know, what do you mean processes in place? Well, you know, do you, do you make sure that you give them a, um, a thank you, you know, by email or maybe a handmade card every month? 
Um, do you have a process in place to give them a gift or, you know, something little like a, you know, you could cut up some cardstock, something that you have around here. It doesn't have to be anything major, but just something to let them know that you appreciate their order. Are you taking care of them? Are you keeping them informed? So when Stampin' Up! have a new update, do you have the processes in place to be able to inform them of those um, changes? So can you put it up on a Facebook group or can you send them a newsletter? Um, do you send them an email to let them know what's happening? So all of those things are your systems or processes that you need to have in place. Yeah, so I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying a new system because I can do cool things like this and have quotes on the page. But sadly... Yes, what I thought might happen is happening, which is very sad. <laughs> oh, I want um, I want to be able to do cool stuff, but the internet in Australia sadly doesn't handle it. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> bit start and stop, but we're not missing any words. Oh, that's good. <laughs> You're just seeing weird faces freezing all the time. <laughs> um, so over promising, and I really liked this one. I thought this was excellent because. We might be really, really wanting those new customers and so we'll promise them the world and then we can't follow through and we can end up losing those customers if we're not careful. And I'm very much like that. I'm such a words person. I'll promise the world, but then when it comes through with the follow through, I'm like, oh my goodness, we've got to actually do this now. Um, so knowing your weaknesses and maybe where you can't deliver, maybe you need to ask for help. Um, maybe you need to really analyze, like, can I actually do this or am I undercutting myself? Like, make sure you value yourself. Don't undercut yourself with value or with money just for the sake of getting customers because long term it will affect your business. Like, you might be finding, you know, corners to cut here or there to get that customer or maybe you're, you've got a few goals that you want to reach and you're like, oh, just, you know, do this and do this and promise the world. Um, but it does affect your customers in the long run because then they're going to be like, oh, I wonder if they're going to do another special like that again. Or, you know, they might come to expect um, things that you over-delivered on. Um, and I, I think even Marie Folio, when we took her, she said, whatever you do, don't discount, um, just deliver more. So don't ever, um, you know, lower the cost because obviously that's going to affect the company. It's going to affect your income. Um, it will create um, sort of an expectation with your customers as well, which is never a good thing to get them into that routine of thinking that they're going to get um, sales or discounts from you. Stampin' Up! do enough of them. We can utilize it when they come along. So um, not taking risks. And I really like this one because sometimes in Stampin' Up! we... We think, oh my goodness, I don't want to do anything that's out of um, policy and, you know, no one else has done that before. So, you know, what will people say? Um, it's really, really important to innovate. And I will keep reiterating this because trying new things is what helps us as a company to grow. If you're really unsure, the best thing to do is talk it through with Stampin' Up! Call Demonstrator Support say, is this within policy? You know, is there anything that I could change around so that it is within policy? Um, you know, what do you think? This is my idea. This is why I think I want to try this new idea. Um, I know the first time I tried online parties, no one else was trying online parties and now it's huge. You know, so many people are doing Facebook online parties with different um, groups. Sorry, everyone. Everyone's like, it's not working. <laughs> You'll be able to watch the replay. <laughs> um, so, yes, yeah, so making sure, and it's not, I wouldn't actually say a risk, but we could call it a risk in the sense of um, you might feel like, um, you know, you're doing something out of your comfort zone. To me, that's like a risk. It's like, you know, feeling like you're a bit scared and a bit nervous. And I think that um, when you feel like that, it's kind of exciting. It's like, oh, I'm trying something new. So that's really cool. Um, you just want to be different too. Like try different things that someone else hasn't tried before or just, you know, slightly change something, you know, like I've always done my paper shares and there's a lot of people doing paper shares now. So then I decided, you know what, I'm going to try something a little bit different and do the love it, chop it, cardstock and paper club. You know, it's sort of a twist on something that's already been done before, but it is a little bit different. So that's always exciting to try. 
failing to delegate. <clears throat> and we are shocking at this, us women. We find it very hard to let go, to ask for help. I know with Brene's always like, come on, you can just ask me if you need help. Um, so you need to actually learn to trust other people and you need to know who you can go to for help. So start looking at who you can have as a backup, you know, come over and craft with you. If you're finding it hard to keep up with your customer cards, you've designed the card. If they help you, that's fine. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. It's not like your customers are going to go, oh my goodness, you know, I can't believe you got someone to help you. <laughs> they understand. They get it. It's really busy. So making sure that you ask for help in the right areas. Um, ask your other team members. You know, maybe there's someone there that can really help you and would be happy to help you, I'm sure. Um, you could give them a gift to say thanks, but then you're also training them at the same time and they're learning new skills that will then help them in their business later on. Micromanaging. Oh, this is a good one. So I think in this one, micromanaging might be a case of, again, not letting go of certain responsibilities or realizing that you can let go of certain areas of your business as well. So you might like things a certain way and sometimes you have to let go of that, especially in your team. If you've said to them, um, you know, here, this is for you to do. And then all of a sudden you're, you're behind them going, have you checked that? Have you done that? Like let them flourish, let them grow, let them. And if, if they don't get it done, what a great way to learn um, that you're not doing something correctly or you, you know, you haven't, like, that's just the best way to learn. But if you're behind them, like, on them all the time, um, that is not going to help them to develop and to grow as leaders as well. Um, being reactive instead of proactive, this happens so often. And I've seen it in so many businesses. And I do it myself, where instead of having my processes and my systems in place, I am jumping at every single thing that someone's asking me to do and then I'm not getting the important things done and then constantly I'm reacting to, to messages or emails or things that people need me to get done instead of having a process in place so that it's done well before people are having to message me. Um, and, you know, we do get behind with certain things. You know, that's life because we've got so many things to do. We've got um, household duties, we've got a family, we've got cooking, we've got so many other things to do. But, you know, say a, an example of being reactive instead of proactive, I mean, um, proactive instead of reactive is for me having my weekly shopping delivered is such a huge, huge weight off my shoulders because I'm sitting at home planning exactly what we're going to eat for the week. I know exactly what's coming. And then if I need to, I can ask Bruno for help and say, do you mind cooking, you know, this tonight? Because I've already had it there, all ready to go. Um, I've bought the ingredients for it and I know what's coming. And so for the week, our food is actually proactive. I'm not reacting all the time and going, oh my goodness, I need to cook dinner now. And I've just done an eight hour stamping up working day and I do not feel like cooking. Let's get takeaway. You know, that's reactive. You don't want to be doing that. <laughs> so looking at how you can make things easier, have systems in place, not just in your Stampin' Up, but for your life, you know, outside um, that can help you. One thing that I've started doing, and I know this sounds really ridiculous and very simple, but it's made a huge, huge difference. And I've just started doing it in the last couple of weeks is the minute I use a dish, I wash it. And... I have put my dishwashing detergent in a pump, like a hand washing pump, and I just squirt a little bit of the dishwashing detergent on my cloth, turn the tap on, wash it, done. And it is just something so simple, but I feel like it's me being proactive in that area rather than reactive. Because before, it's like, these dishes just come out of nowhere. It's like they multiply. <laughs> um, so it's it's a really interesting concept of how when you can keep on top of something and when you're ahead of it rather than it being on top of you, it makes such a big difference to your life. Like I come out to the kitchen and I'm like, I'm not feeling guilty. I'm not feeling overwhelmed. 
Um, I can make myself a cup of coffee and feel really good. You know, I don't have all this work to do in front of me. So it makes a big difference in, in so many areas in our life. So that's a really good one. Um, so worrying too much about money. Now, this is an interesting one because for <laughs> Stampin' Up! demonstrators, I actually think it's the opposite. <laughs> I think not enough Stampin' Up! demonstrators worry about money. <laughs> And what we do is we undervalue ourselves. Um, we don't actually think about how this particular work that we're doing is going to contribute to income or profit. And I think that's a really, really big area that you need to sit down and analyze for yourself. Why am I doing this project? And because it's like this mashup of hobby meets job meets maybe hobby, maybe business, those lines can be blurred so badly and so we're like no 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 I'm just having fun I'm just having a good time that's why I'm doing it um so much as like teaching Kylie you have to be careful what you say to customers use wisdom oh yes very true <laughs> I like that so it's um it's very interesting because yeah it's it's an it's an area I think a lot of stampin up women don't look after themselves in. Um, and some of you might be able to, you know, reiterate that, that you don't value maybe your time or your energy or value your craft products. Because I've heard some people selling their handmade cards for like $3 or something like that. I mean, it's totally up to you. But have you looked at the cost calculator and seen how much it costs you in product and how much you used in time? Um, so, you know, would you be better off maybe just giving it as a random act of kindness as opposed to trying to sell it and get nothing for it? Um, it's very interesting to look at that whole aspect and write it all down, you know, look at, um, look at where your time is going and is it going to give you the results that you're hoping for? And this is the other one here, never taking time off. And this can happen as you grow your business and other Stampin' Up! demonstrators who, you know, you can become all consumed by it. Definitely. It becomes a treadmill that you think, how do I turn the treadmill off? I can't get off. I can't get off. It's just constantly going. And that's what it's like having a business, particularly because the majority of us have these businesses in our home. So making sure that we shut that door and walk away and maybe don't work certain hours. I mean, I love the flexibility of my job, but I really, really have to make sure I have some sort of timer or something that says, right, you're not working today. You know, don't look at your phone because even with Facebook and things like that, it's just constant, constant. It never ends. Um, so really, we are constantly on and we feel like we should be on, but that's really important to make sure with health, um, for family, for all those key areas that we are making sure that we do take time off to be with our family and friends. So that's they're the really important ones. So they're the don't do's. <coughs> really good points, and I'll put the link up for those um, so that you can have a look later. What time are we sitting at? Oh, yes, we're, we're almost there. But I, w I just want to mention a few good habits to have in business because we've looked at the bad ones, which I think a lot of us go through. Um